So as we talked about before, when we're predicting the properties of a polypeptide chain, the amino acid composition and the amino acid sequence both play really important roles at governing the properties of what a peptide will have. Right? And this is both chemical and physical. So chemical, we're in large thinking about um, things like acid-base chemistry, um, the ability for the side chains to be modified. And physical, we're more thinking about whether things are hydrophobic, right? So nonpolar side chains, hydrophobic, or polar side chains that will interact well with water, so hydrophilic. Okay? Um, and when we're talking about beta sheets, right? So you remember the beta sheets we have, right? So a sequence starting at the N terminus going to the C terminus, and then we might have this beta sheet wrapping around to form another beta sheet. Okay, so over here would be this would then be the C terminus. So here we have an anti-parallel beta sheet. And remember we can very much predict um, what the sides of this beta sheet would look like because we have alternating orientations of the amino acid side chains. So from going from N terminus to C terminus, we have a side chain oriented up and then down, and then up and then down and up. And then when we move over here, the first one might be oriented up as well, the second one down, the third one up, the fourth one down, and the fifth one up. So amino acids within the polypeptide chains alternate so we can very easily predict what the top side of a beta sheet will look like and also the bottom side. But with an alpha helix, it's not quite as easy, because remember, with an alpha helix, we start N terminus, and then we kind of go through this coil that forms this column, this, this cylinder. So it's definitely not as easy to predict um, how the side chains stick out of this helix. Okay, and that's where this uh, new idea is going to come in, and this is our heptad repeat. Okay, so the idea with the heptad repeat is that if we think about an alpha helix, looking at it from the top down, okay, we have seven different positions. Okay, so if we start here at position one, then position two would be here position three, position four, so kind of make a box, and now when you move to position five, move between one and two. So here are position five, position six, and position seven. And then we would then repeat and go back to position number one. So we have these seven specific locations uh, within the exterior of an alpha helix where the side chains are oriented. So the first side chain is pointed outwards at position one. The second one is pointed outwards at position two. The third position would be pointed outwards at position three. The fourth amino acid outwards at position four. Outwards at position five. The sixth would be outwards here. And the seventh would be outwards here. If there's more amino acids in the polypeptide chain that are part of an alpha helix, then we would then repeat and go back to position number one. So let's consider a couple different polypeptide chains and think about how the properties of the, the alpha helix might be influenced by this heptad repeat idea. Okay, the first one, let's think about threonine, arginine, glycine, serine, glutamic acid, lysine, and finally asparagine. Okay, so if these are part of an alpha helix, we can very much predict what the exterior of this alpha helix is going to look like. Because threonine is going to be at position 1, arginine 2, glycine 3, serine 4, glutamic acid at position 5, lysine at position 6, and asparagine at position 7. So over here we would have threonine, which we talked about before, has this polar um, uh, alcohol group. 
Position two is arginine, which we know um, is one of our basic amino acids, so it has a positive charge. Position three is a glycine, which is just a hydrogen. Position four is serine, which has an alcohol side chain. Position number five is glutamic acid, which is a negative charge, so it's one of our acidic amino acids. Lysine's at position number six, so we have a positive charge here. And at position number seven is asparagine, which is polar. So that had the amide at the end. So as we look at the exterior of this alpha helix, we see polar and polar, right? So we have these two hydrogen bonding uh, amino acids at position one and four, and they're close to each other. We have a polar amino acid here, not Over on this face of the alpha helix, we have um, three charged amino acids. And then at position number three here, we have a glycine, which is not necessarily polar or nonpolar. Okay, so we would certainly expect this alpha helix to interact well with water. And this side of the helix, we might expect it to not just interact well with water, but perhaps be part of ion-ion interactions with some other part of a protein. Okay, let's think about a different polypeptide chain now. What if we have serine, valine, alanine, asparagine, threonine, leucine, and isoleucine. So just as we saw above, position one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so let's go ahead and erase what we have going on here. And we'll be able to predict what this polypeptide chain looks like. Okay, so we have this polypeptide chain that's part of, uh, that's part of an alpha helix. Okay, so serine is a position one. We know that's a OH, it's an alcohol group. Position two, we have valine, which is nonpolar. Position three is alanine, so this is nonpolar. Position four is asparagine, that is polar. Position five is a threonine, this again is an alcohol, so an OH. Position six is leucine, so nonpolar. And position seven is isoleucine, which is also nonpolar. So if we look at this polypeptide chain now, right, so as it's part of an alpha helix, what hopefully you can pretty clearly see is that there's a divide. So right down the middle here, we have a nonpolar side of our alpha helix, and we have a polar side of our alpha helix. So this side we would expect to interact well with water, and this side we would expect to interact well with something that's nonpolar, perhaps like the core of a protein, or maybe a lipid bilayer. So using this heptad repeat, you can predict what the physical and chemical properties of an alpha helix will be, just like you can um, using this idea of alternating uh, amino acids within a beta sheet or an extended polypeptide chain.